archbishop machado ah yes uh, your grace i was just trying to call you yeah. uh, i i hindu christian dialogue for uh, now we have the welcome speech before the welcome speech let me introduce the director professor father matthew chandran kunal from carmelites of mary maclet is the director of the ecumenical christian center whitefield bangalore He has been serving as a director from 2016 onwards professor chandran kunal is also a professor of philosophy of science and religion conscious studies at dharmaram vidyakshetram christ university bangalore he also as a research guide he is guiding number of theses and dissertations he is also a research guide and examiner at the senate of sarampur college and he has delivered number of scholarly lectures in many universities in india as well as in abroad including cambridge and oxford universities professor chenamunal received a doctorate from the faculty of philosophy university of leuven belgium professor matthew chenamunal did his post doctoral studies in uh, harvard university professor chenamunal is also trained journalist work as a science editor of deepika daily newspaper its chennai and bangalore correspondent and published more than 500 articles in uh, referred journals newspapers and magazines without wasting much time i cordially invite professor matthew chandran kunal to address the gathering over to you father your grace uh, metropolitan most reverend dr uh, theodosius marthoma the chairman of ecumenical christian center most uh, reverend uh, dr archbishop uh, felix uh, machado um, your grace um, swamiji dayatmananda uh, pastors uh, friends and uh, beloved dialogue partners i am extremely happy to welcome um, all of you to this august assembly and as we all know that we are all Uh, suffering and we are in pain because all over the world and especially in india uh, we see that the covid is spreading very much and so many deaths of our friends and relatives so uh, maybe uh, i think it is a time uh, for us uh, to pray earnestly uh, so that the divine intervention and the spreading Uh, may be uh, curtailed and all of us together uh, we can so we uh, here as a fellowship so that was the the way we wanted to come together as the great partners of this country as well as from all over the world to be in a fellowship to be in a fraternity so that is the the reason why we uh, introduced this uh, hindu christian uh, dialogue our founder reverend dr m a thomas was always thinking about the dialogue as the best way uh, for fellowship peace harmony and progress so we are continuing his legacy we had already had a few other uh, conferences and one of them uh, is uh, buddhist christian dialogue now we have the hindu christian dialogue and then uh, we also conducted so many um, interfaith dialogue so today most welcome and the partners uh, of this uh, great uh, dialogue we have the ramakrishna mission and we know very well that you know how um, the sri ramakrishna paramahamsa and um, swami vivekananda they have established the ramakrishna mission and the ramakrishna mission general secretary interested uh, us uh, to have this dialogue and uh, we have swami ji dayatmananda uh, is uh, here with us and also the catholic bishops conference of uh, the di- the office of the the dialogue and we have the secretary general uh, himself is also here and then there is also the uh, focolare movement represented by caroline and there are also other members and uh, we are all together under the guidance and leadership of our chairman uh, most reverend dr metropolitan uh, theodosius marthoma 
um, we are introducing or we are into dialogue with each other so that how we can enhance our uh, fraternity, our fellowship, uh, peace, and um, how we can serve the wider humanity. So we have the chairman of the ECC, Most Reverend Dr. Theodosius Marthoma. It was a hectic day last two, three days because the emeritus Metropolitan, the former uh, head of the Marthoma Church, uh, Most Reverend Dr. Uh, Philippos Mark Chrysostom uh, passed away, and just now the um, the funeral is over. But still, our uh, chairman, Most Reverend Dr. Theodosius Marthoma, is here with us. So, first of all, I wanted to give a warm welcome uh, to. Um, most Reverend Dr. Theodosius Marthoma, the head of the Marthoma Church, as well as the chairman of ECC. Maybe uh, let us raise our hands and uh, welcome um, our chairman. Thank and you. And also on this occasion, we wanted to uh, uh, convey our deep felt condolences as the former emeritus head of the church is also passed away. So uh, we all are praying and many of us, I also put it on the Facebook and many were conveying their prayers and regards and how a great statesman and uh, also a person who loved the people and uh, how he was very simple and a humble person. So um, your grace, uh, Mark uh, Theodosius uh, Metropolitan, the head of the Marthama Church, we all convey our uh, heartfelt condolences at this moment. Thank you. And um, I uh, welcome Archbishop Felix uh, Machado. Uh, Felix, Archbishop Felix Machado was uh, the, uh, the Secretary uh, General uh, to the, uh, the Commission, uh, the Council for Interfaith Dialogue in Rome. And at present, um, um, Archbishop is the Secretary General of the Catholic Bishops Conference of India, very much involved with the uh, ecumenical as well as the other uh, interfaith di dialogue with other religious traditions. More details uh, will be given uh, when uh, the felicitations were there. Also, Swamiji Dayatmananda, uh, who was a very close associate of uh, um, ECC as well as other uh, uh, communities. And recently, till recently, he was here in Bangalore, now moved to uh, Varanasi. And um, he's uh, an erudite scholar uh, in Christianity as well as in Hinduism. And he lived all over the world. And then uh, he will be uh, felicitating uh, today. Uh, most welcome, uh, Swamiji. We also have uh, Caroline uh, Busutil. Uh, she's also a chartered accountant, and uh, she is from the Focolare movement, uh, which is also very part of uh, the interfaith dialogue of ECC. Several times they were here. And um, we welcome the members of the Focolare and also especially Caroline Busutil. So, um, I uh, request uh, our, and also we have um, uh, more than 74 uh, members. We have uh, pastors, we have erudite scholars, we have also friends of uh, ECC, and uh, I am sure that uh, there are also friends from all over the world. They have uh, joined together. So I don't know whether to say good evening or uh, good afternoon or good morning. Uh, but I think uh, we can say good day. And then uh, this is a, uh, um, uh, yes, I see people from Italy, from France and uh, United States, uh, from Canada. So some of the faces known to us. So I think uh, the, the global screen is here. So we are all together for uh, this interfaith uh, dialogue, especially Hindu Christian dialogue. And um, I request um, Reverend Sukumar uh, to uh, introduce um, 
Mar Theodosius, is the chairman of ECC, so that we can uh, welcome him to the inaugural address. Thank you very much for the Matthew. <clears throat> I'm extremely delighted to introduce His Grace, the most reverend Dr. Theodosius Marthoma Metropolitan Thirumeni for the inaugural lecture. Marthoma Theodosius Thirumeni studied at the Basilios College Kotayam in 1966. <clears throat> and Marthama College, Thiruvala, 1969. After taking a degree in science, Thirumeni joined Leonard Theological College and he took a BD degree in 1972. Thirumeni studied comparative religions in Vishwabharati University, Shantini Ketan, and Thirumeni completed his master's and doctoral PhD studies from McMaster University, Hamilton, Canada in 1982-1986. <clears throat> he was consecrated as Episcopa on December 9th. From 1973 onwards, he was in charge of several parishes, including Mumbai, Santa Cruz, Calcutta parishes in Canada, and Rochester's in the United States of America. He served as the first director of Marthoma Athanasius Orientation Center in Mangana. He was the Episcopa of the Kunam Kulam, Malabar, Thiruvananthapuram, Kollam, Chennai, Bangalore, Malaysia, Singapore, Australia, North America, Europe dioceses. He is presently a metropolitan and also chairman of Ecumenical Christian Centre. On July 12, 2020, he was given as a title the Suffragan Metropolitan during the service at Pulatin Chapel officiated by the Metropolitan, the Most Reverend Dr. Joseph Marthuma in the presence of the bishops, clergy, and the laity of the church. On November 14, 2020, Thirumeni was installed as a 22nd Marthuma Metropolitan with the title Theodosius Marthoma Metropolitan. The installation service was held at Dr. Alexander Marthoma Valia Metropolitan Samskar Auditorium, Thiruvella. With due respect and immense gratitude, I cordially invite His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Theodosius Marthama Metropolitan Thirumeni to deliver inaugural lecture. Over to you, Thirumeni. Thank you. Your Grace. Yep. Can you hear me? All yes. Of you? yes, yes, yes. Dear friends, the Ecumenical Christian Center, ECC, founded by the late Reverend Dr. M. A. Thomas, is known for its wider ecumenism. It is always a center where people from across the world are welcome, irrespective of caste, color, class, creed, and gender. The aim is that everyone who gets in contact with ECC will have an at-home experience always. The office bearers and members of the council governing board are keen to observe that discipline of being inclusive and welcoming. Every meeting is an experience to widen this horizon in our thinking discussions, deliberations, and actions. I am happy to announce that Father Dr. Chandra Kunnel, the present director of ECC, has organized this event in collaboration with Sri Ramakrishna Mat Catholic Bishops Conference of India, Folklore Movement, and other groups and friends. Dr. Basham, who lived as a research scholar and learned about India, wrote a book with the title, The Wonder That Is India. Indian culture has a beauty of its own. It is mosaic of cultures intertwining and at the same time embraced by the masses 
appreciating, fostering with the celebration of unity in diversity and always living in fellowship and fraternity. Let us join the people of India in a humble effort to continue the great tradition of living together spiritually and socially for peace, harmony, and progress. Reverend Dr. M.A. Thomas, founder of ECC, had this experience. He was fond of people like Jawaharlal Nehru, Rajagopal Ajayi, Sarvepalli Rathakrishnan, Prabhalini, Jayaprayas Narayan, and so on. With an open mind to learn more and to enter into a life of dialogue, to spread its vision of coexistence and to celebrate unity in diversity. Dear friends, today we are inaugurating a series of lectures on dialogue, dialogue with religions and cultures. I am happy that Sri Ramakrishna Amad, CBCI and Folklore and other organizations are participating with the same spirit. May this effort of the Ecumenical Christian Center bear fruit for the glory of God and for the blessing of the whole created order. I'll be touching today on the significance of the Hindu-Christian dialogue. Dear friends, dialogue has been defined as witnessing to our deepest convictions and listening to those of our neighbors. Let me repeat. Dialogue has been defined as witnessing to our deepest convictions and listening to those of our neighbors. The definition is simple and straightforward, but it is difficult to practice for the fundamentalists and people who are communitarian. The normal tendency is to fortify by building walls to compartmentalize one's own faith and faith practices. The worldview of each religion is to be understood properly to understand what that religion is speaking about. The simple spirit of compare and contrast when we deal with different religions will not do good if the worldview of the particular religion is not considered properly. Hinduism speaks about the religion of the people of the land before beyond the river Indus. This itself, this itself is vast, open, and has variations with the people in different religions. Hinduism tolerated the growth and practices of Buddhism and Jainism. Though these two religions are silent about the doctrine of God, Hinduism speaks about one God, spoken by people as different with the concept of Ishta Devada. Therefore, we see expressions of plurality and multiplicity in the Hindu religious practices of the people of India. Hindu tradition is a single monotheistic doctrinal practice. It has Shaiva and Vaishnava traditions. It has great philosophical wealth and darsanas in the teachings of Sri Shankarajarya, Rama, Ramanuja, and Madhava, all Ajaryas. It has great bhakti traditions such as Alvas, Chaitanya, Tukuram, and Mirabai. There are also recent teachings from Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Sri Vivekananda, Sri Ramana Maharshi, Sri Narayana Guru, and the like. Time does not permit me today to go into the details. I am mindful of the fact that uh, this is only an inauguration of the number of uh, 
topics that will be coming after, where each one will be going into the details of the doctrines and dogmas of each religion, Hinduism, Christianity, in detail later on. I consider that during the course of the series, there will be expositions and lectures on the various topics and religious leaders of Hinduism. Dear friends, in the same way, Christianity has its worldview with the doctrines on God, man, world, humankind, salvation, eschatology, and the like. Practices varying from one denomination to the other. Various expressions of mission and ministry revealed through committed people and through different institutions. We have Catholicism and Protestant theology. We have St. Thomas Christian tradition in India and its reform movements. We have the teachings of the missionaries and their down-to-earth attitude or service, like the missionaries of charity. Again, dear friends, I am not going into the details of the doctrines and dogma or the Christian tradition. We need to learn from each other, understanding fellow beings as brothers and sisters, cooperating for better living and serving each other. I remember at this time the history of the Sarambal missionaries, the great trial, the significance they have in the tradition of dialogue and the reform movement that they have brought in uh, to the great land of India. The missionary conferences and ecumenical bodies of the Christian churches are making efforts in the 18th century onwards to understand other religions. The World Missionary Conference of 1910 at Edinburgh recognized the spirit of God working in the higher forms of other religions and affirmed that all religions disclose elemental needs of the human soul. The Jerusalem Conference in 1928 regarded other religions as allies of the Christian faith. W. E. Hawking, USA, in 1932, revealed that the task of the missionary should be to see the best in other religions. H. Kramer, Henry Kramer, preparing for the Tambara Missionary Conference in 1938, wrote in the Christian message in a non-Christian world, with a quotation, though in other religions, values of deep religious expressions may be found, in Christ alone is the full salvation which human need, humans need, quotation close. Indian theologians like Tanjaya and Vichakaraya highly criticized the opinion of Kramer. According to them, God and human person have met and fused together in the incarnation of God in Jesus. This is significant. It requires an open-minded approach to other religions. As a result, the World Council of Churches, WCC, and Second Vatican Council supported the dialogue approach. The Uppsala Assembly of 1964, which is the fourth assembly, welcomed this attitude and said, in dialogue, we share our common humanity. WCC established a department for dialogue on the same year. The consultation in dialogue in 1977 discussed the theme, 
dialogue in community. And the meeting at Jamaica in 1979 adopted a guiding document for the ongoing dialogue. After the Nairobi conference in 1975 and Vancouver conference in 1983, WCC conducted a study program on my neighbor's faith and mine and stated, we believe that walking together with people of other living faiths will bring us to a fuller understanding and experience of truth. Dear friends, let me again recall the, the reform movement that we had in India when the Sarambu missionaries landed in West Bengal. William Carey and his uh, friends, they had dialogue with people like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, P.C. Musumda, K.C. Chandrasen, and brought out uh, so many reform movements within the culture and religious traditions of India at that time. As we look into the details of uh, every pilgrimage people had together, whether it is one denomination or the other, one movement or the other, there are several things that have happened down through the history. I'm not able to trace all the movements uh, that took place within the various religious traditions, both on the Christian side and uh, on the side of the Hindu religious leaders. Every time people have come together in the spirit of dialogue to understand each other and uh, took time to enter into conversations, and also made efforts to work together for peace and harmony among the people of the land. We see that this dialogue approach was progressing and the same spirit should continue even now when we have our own concerns and the challenges in the field. Some stalwarts in the Christian dialogue with Hinduism since 19th century are one Krishna Mohan Banerjee, who lived 1893 to 1885. He tried to interpret Christ and Christianity in terms of Vedic thought. He took a positive attitude to Hinduism. He found Christianity as the logical conclusion of Vedic Hinduism. Banerjee exposed Christ as the true Prajapati mentioned in the Vedas. Coming to another person, Brahma Banda Upadhyaya, who lived up to 1907, he interpreted the Holy Spirit as Satchit Ananda and uh, creation as Maya. A person like S.K. George, who lived from 1900 to 1960, he placed Jesus Christ in the Hindu religious heritage as Ishta Devada. Manilal Se Parikh, who lived in Rajkot from 1885 to 1965, he said, we need to realize Jesus as the head of a new world order. He is the creative expression of God's higher purpose with regard to humans. Chanchaya, whom we mentioned earlier, according to him, the face of Christ is the emergence of life partaking in the immortal nature of God beyond sin and death. A.S. Apasami, 1891 to 1980, he had a conviction that the Holy Spirit is the Andayamin, the indwelling one. He reminds us of that when speaking of Jesus as Avadara, he should also bear in mind the distinction that he is the incarnation of the whole being, God for all times, 
and he came to redeem sinners. Sri Abhishekta, Swami Abhishekta Ananda, 1910 to 1973. He interpreted Jesus as Chit in the context of his interpretation of the Trinity in Sakchidananda. Raymond Panikar. Ishvara is the unknown Christ of Hinduism. He understands Christ as the one who transcends Christianity and is the center of reality. We can go on. In all these, we see that Christian dialogues with Hinduism is generally positive, encouraging, and rewarding. I am not forgetting the fact that there were also uh, people who were conservative and people who were not able to understand uh, the other religions as it should be understood and therefore expressing their views different from what I have narrated now. In conclusion, while we deal with this topic, let us be aware that India at present is witnessing interreligious rivalry and conflict at a level unheard of in its past history. Many a time, the lost equilibrium was restored by leaders of true religiosity. This is a wonder that we see in the land of India and particularly among the people I, I say the religious people of India. From the beginning of 2014, there is an increase in the attacks on the minority communities. There are attempts to promote a monoculture language, religion, and nation. This is irrelevant when there are more urgent and pertinent socio economic questions that need to be addressed by the nation that is pluralistic today to establish a tolerant humanism. This summons different faiths to live and work together for a more human community. Faith communities are therefore challenged to find a new spirituality in all the present human struggles. To seek justice by uniting all religions and ideologies to focus on the social needs. Dear friends, the need of our day is to develop a deep spiritual commitment for recreating deep levels of meaning for human existence and also thereby to cater to the welfare of the total humanity that promotes life. Let me repeat that. The need of our day is to develop a deep spiritual commitment for recreating deep levels of meaning for human existence and also thereby to cater to the welfare of the total humanity that promotes life. In the context of religious pluralism, dialogue is inevitable. It does not imply giving up one's religious identity, but it is to be seen as a spiritual journey of mutual enrichment to promote building a common humanity. Dear friends, I stop here for the reflection by all the participants. Let me also confess that I was not able to go into the details of Hindu religious history. I was not able to go into the de details of Christian religious practices, doctrines, or dogmas. And I was also not able to go into the details of the dialogue that was taking place in our great land of India by people of different faiths. 
these are all taking place from time to time. Each one has got its growth and its de development and also specific commitments and convictions. This is an ongoing process. But then in understanding the spirit of brotherhood and also realizing the great need to understand each other and in knowing that the spirit of God is enabling us to grow spiritually. Let us pause for a moment to understand what we need is a sense of commitment and open-mindedness mindedness, and also a spirit of welcome where we will be understanding our brothers and sisters more than with what we could understand in the earlier times. And also understanding that it is together that we carry out this spiritual journey. And certainly the spiritual growth that God Almighty is granting to each one in each faith tradition. So that as a human community, we will always grow and progress so that everyone will be benefited. Everyone will be blessed and we will have the spirit of caring and also the spirit of sharing. And that I believe is the one kingdom or one fellowship of humanity where we also acknowledge that there is one God and we, be, we all are together in the created world in which we are living. There's a, this is a great challenge and there is a great scope for us before us. And at the same time, it is our commitment to participate that helps not only us, but also uh, blessing uh, our brothers and sisters in uh, the human community together to realize that we are all uh, members of one family. May God, the only one true God, enable each one of us to understand each other and also to grow together. Thank you very much for your patient listening. You can share your views and uh, we will be able to enrich the inaugural address that took place today with all humility and with your permission. I do inaugurate the series of dialogue that we are going to have through ECC in the coming weeks. And may Almighty God enable us to that, to carry out that great ministry for his glory and also for the blessing of each one of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Grace. Most Reverend Dr. Theodosius Marthoma Metropolitan uh, for this splendid um, lecture going into the deeper dimensions of the significance of uh, Hindu Christian dialogue. Your Grace has gone really deep uh, into what is uh, Hinduism and then also on Christianity and the importance of dialogue and also specified the need of today that we have to work hand in hand as faith communities. And you have exhorted us that as a new humanity based on our commitment and understanding of meaning and welfare of promoting uh, life and also to as a process of pilgrimage to one kingdom, one, one fellowship of humanity. So we are uh, really grateful to your, um, your grace for this wonderful lecture. And maybe um, two or three people can express um, their observations or appreciation. And then after that, we will move on to the felicitation. Anyone would like to? 
Yes, Father Matthew. Yes, yes, Swamiji. Yes, minutes? yes, Swamiji. I have to express my heartfelt thanks. It's one of the most relevant talks I have heard recently. And as His Grace has said, that all of us have to work as with as one unity and sincerely commit ourselves for the peace and spiritual commitment. Only then, really, this dialogue becomes meaningful and also serviceful to the whole world. Once again, my thanks to the beautiful talk and also for organizing this to you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Swamiji. Anyone else? I think uh, then we shall uh, move on Hello. to uh, yes. Hello. Yeah, Matthew G. Yeah, Raja from Gandhi Gram. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, yeah the you know it was a wonderful talk and uh, the inaugural address and he synthesized both the, the Hindu uh, philosophy and the Christianity and its uh, philosophy, not only in terms of the theological or the, the aspect, of, aspect of philosophy, but how to live together. That is a very, very important aspect that time has come now and we have to rededicate ourselves, not that only, you know, uh, uh, just to talk and leave, but we have to rededicate ourselves and leave, try to live together at this very, very crisis and critical situation. I am very grateful to you, sir, for organizing this and also the wonderful talk that he has given. Thank you very much. Very kind. Thank, of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Then shall we move on to the, um, the felicitation part? Um, I uh, request um, uh, Sukumar to introduce Swamiji. Yes, Father, thank you. Let me introduce a dynamic speaker, Swami Dayatmananda. Swami Dayatmananda was born in 1943 in the state of Andhra Pradesh, India deeply influenced by the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna and Swami Vivekananda. He joined the Ramakrishna order after finishing his college education in 1963. In fact, Swami Dayatmananda was ordained as a monk in 1973. He was working in various capacities in several centers of the order in India. His last center being in Bangalore where he worked for 17 years. In 1991, he was posted to United Kingdom as an assistant minister of the Ramakrishna Vedanta Center. After the passing away of the then apostle in 1993, Swami Dayatmananda has taken charge of the Ramakrishna Vedanta Center in United Kingdom. His special field of interest is Advaita Vedanta the non-dualistic philosophy propagated by Shankaracharya as reinterpreted by Swami Vivekananda in our time. He is now leading a retired life at the Ramakrishna Mission Home Service, Varanasi. Dear Swami Dayatmananda, we are extremely delighted to have you with us. Now, over to you. Thank you very much. Are you able to see me and hear me as well? Yes, Swamiji. Yes, Wonderful. And uh, Father Matthew, how much time do you expect me to speak? You can have almost 10 minutes, Swamiji. All right. So, Om Sarve Janah Sukhino Bhavantu Sarve Santu Niramaya Om Shanti 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 Hari Om There is this universal prayer. We have all come from 
God. If we take any perspective, even Buddhism, Buddha did not speak about God, but it doesn't mean he denied God or he denied scriptures. He was deeply embedded in the Upanishadic thoughts. He only expressed that supreme reality, what Hinduism expresses as neti, neti, not this, not this, indescribable, formless, eternal, causeless, and in his personal form, what we call God as the creator of this world. So many people mistake Buddhism as an atheistic religion. That is not true. Swami Vivekananda, to whose organization I belong, has defined every soul is a potentially divine soul. No religion, no language, no culture, no race, no country can hold back this potential divinity. If we can hold on to that impersonal aspect that we are all potentially divine, not that I am a Hindu, I am a Christian, I am a Muslim, I am a Buddhist, I am a Jain, etc. Because these are the man-made barriers. Let us look at ourselves from one particular angle. We are all having a body. There is absolutely no difference between man, woman, an animal, a mosquito, all living beings are absolutely made up of the same flesh and blood. What about the mind? On the mind's level, every creature that has been created by God, or if we take naturalists, even if we do not take the name of God or creator, every living creature always desires only three things which has been recognized by Vedic rishis and formulated into beautiful prayers of which most of us, are, most of you are familiar. Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya, Mrityorma Amritangamaya. May I always be, may I not be even for a single second, let that condition not come. May I ever be conscious that I am a conscious being. And of course, we all know that every creature wants to live, wants to have knowledge, and wants to be happy. Not only it wants to be happy, it wants to be happier, wants to be happiest, not for a moment, but forever. So eternal life, infinite knowledge, and unending happiness, bliss. These are the three prayers, either vocalized or not of every living creature on this earth. And if we can focus upon this commonality, these three characteristics, I want to be, I want to be conscious, and I want to be happy. Then we become one. We can feel that we are all brothers and sisters. So what is the lesson? We should not label ourselves, compartmentalize ourselves. I am a Hindu, I am a man, I am a woman, I am a Christian, 
I am a human being because now many scientists are also coming to the understanding the whole universe must be looked upon as one harmonious unit. This is called holistic attitude. We should not have what we call a compartmentalized attitude. Here, this is the philosophy which can harmonize all of us. Then second point is, irrespective of whatever religion we are following, all of us wholeheartedly agree that there is only one God. By definition, God can only be one. If there is only one God, then we are all calling the same God by different names, by different characteristics, in different forms, and whether even when we use images or icons or symbols, whatever be the approach we have. But the longing is those the fulfillment of those three potentialities. Not to die, not to be ignorant, not to be suffering or unhappy. So if we can take these two, we are all one bodily, mentally, physically, psychologically, intellectually, aesthetically, morally, and we are all longing to manifest to that divinity, the collective name of which is God, in other words, to be God or to go to God. And this interfaith dialogue is a very necessary step. So I'm very happy to participate in it. I'll be speaking specially. What is the contribution of the greatest religious personality in the 19th century? And I'll be speaking upon both Sri Ramakrishna in one talk and upon Swami Vivekananda in another talk, as I have been ordered by Father Matthew. But briefly, this is what I wanted to tell. This is a beautiful program. Let's continue with one request. Let us all be deeply committed to this one idea that we are all one and we remain one and we become one when we reach God. I pray to the Divine Lord, let everybody be conscious of his or her potential divinity. Let us all help each other through mental prayer, through physical service and through sweet words in every way that is possible. This is my sincere prayer and thanks to Father Matthew and all my brothers and sisters who are participating today and also will be participating in future. Om Shantihi Shantihi Shanti. Thank you very much, uh, Swamiji Dayatmananda. You have spoken from the wealth of uh, the wisdom and your experience, and you have exhorted us that uh, at present we are all fragmenting ourselves, and the need of uh, the time is that we have to transcend ourselves beyond our barriers and manifest ourselves to God so that we become one when we meet the one. So thank you very much for this wonderful uh, exhortation to us. And uh, Swamiji, uh, I just wanted to inform you all, Swamiji will be speaking next Thursday at six o'clock on Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. And um, another uh, Thursday, Swamiji will be speaking on Swami Vivekananda. 
So Swamiji uh, has already uh, kindly accepted that. So the schedule will be given to you. So thank you once again, Swamiji, for leading us to this partners, peace and uh, progress and to the one. Thank you. And uh, the next uh, person is none other than the Secretary General of the Catholic Bishops Conference of India, Archbishop uh, Felix uh, Machado. Archbishop is the uh, taking care of the Wasai Diocese. And I had the great opportunity to meet Archbishop in Rome when Archbishop was the secretary to the Pontifical Council for Interfaith Dialogue. And uh, uh, his grace was also part of uh, many years in dialogue. And uh, I must say that, you know, a person who is fully uh, given his life uh, for the interfaith dialogue. So I uh, request uh, Reverend Sugumar uh, to introduce Archbishop, um, his grace, uh, Felix Machado. Thank you, Father. Let me introduce His Grace, the Most Reverend Felix Machado. Archbishop His Grace Felix Machado was born in Vasai on 6th June 1948. Completed schooling in Vasai. He successfully completed his, his studies in Indian and Western philosophy from St. Pius X College, Archdiocesan Major Seminary. Goregon, Mumbai in 1973, licentiate in Christian theology from the Catholic Faculty of Theology in Lyon in France in 1976, diploma in the Third World Theologies from Mary Knoll School of Theology in New York in the United States of America in 1979, Master of Arts in Christian Theology from Mary Knoll School of Theology in New York in 1980, Doctor of Philosophy from the prestigious institution by name Fordham University in New York in 1984. He was a faculty staff at Hofstra University, Hampshire, Long Island in the United States of America in 1982-1984. He taught Indian philosophy and systematic dogmatic theology in St. Saint, Saint Pius X College, the Archdiocesan Seminary, Goregon in Mumbai from 1985 to 1993. He taught Christianity at KJ Somaya Bharatiya Sanskriti Peetam, Mumbai in 1991. In fact, numerous articles in various Indian and foreign journals of philosophy and theology in various languages such as Marathi, English, French, and Italian are to his credits. He was also the editor of Pro Dialogue, a Vatican publication for dialogue with the religions Archbishop Dr. Felix Machado's mother tongue is Marathi. He was under secretary at the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, Pope's office at Vatican City. Archbishop Dr. Machado has participated and continued to participate in international seminars and conferences in different countries mm -hmm. of the world mm -hmm. and delivered keynote addresses, mm -hmm. major talks, conferences, etc. He was appointed as the Bishop of Diocese of Nasik on 16th January 2008 by Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI and ordained Bishop on 8th March 2008 in Nasik. Presently, he has, he's the Archbishop, the Bishop of Diocese of Nasik. He was a President of the Western Region Bishops Council for two consecutive terms. And he's the Secretary General of Catholic Bishops Conference of India from February 2020. He's also the member of Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue appointed by Pope Francis on 8th July 2020. With due respect and immense gratitude, I cordially invite Archbishop Dr. Felix Machado for the felicitation. Over to you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, uh, for this uh, introduction. Um, your Grace, Metropolitan Theodosius Martoma, Chairman of uh, ECC, uh, Swamiji uh, Dayatmananda, uh, Father Matthew, the present director, uh, Reverend Sukumar, uh, Miss Caroline and Fokalari, friends of mine. Uh, 
and all those who are participating. Uh, I am in full consonance with my two previous uh, esteemed speakers. Uh, His Grace uh, uh, Metropolitan Theodosius Martoma, uh, I have met him twice personally in Vasai itself. Just, I live at a, uh, hardly a mile away from the Martoma church here. And I have uh, very close contacts with uh, this church and uh, Metropolitan Theodosius Martoma visited this place twice and I was privileged to be with him there. I'm ever grateful for this opportunity that I get. I want to just uh, make a mention of this, uh, totally irrelevant perhaps, but personally I feel uh, I must say this, that I'm closely associated with uh, ECC in Bangalore. How? Because somehow or the other, the founder, uh, Father M.A. Thomas, found out about me. I was in Goregao Seminary that uh, was mentioned, teaching there. And uh, Father M.A. Thomas, the founder of ECC, traveled from Bangalore together with two Catholic bishops to convince my archbishop in Bombay that I be released to work in ECC. Well, I was uh, delighted to hear that, but uh, my archbishop had other plans. And so uh, very gently, he kind of uh, persuaded M.A. Thomas, but he did not give up. And so I was a very frequent visitor to ECC for all kinds of programs that were given there uh, between 1985 and, uh, to, uh, and 19, uh, to, uh, 1993, before I went to Rome. He was a visionary for me. Uh, he was an ecumenist for me. And he was a dear friend for me. Uh, God bless him. I believe he is in heaven with uh, our Lord. Uh, I would like also to say that uh, the address given by uh, Metropolitan Theodosius Martoma, I really feel like uh, Swamiji uh, Dayatmananda that uh, in recent times such deep and touching the points that we need to hear have been said by uh, His Grace. He may mention, I don't want to touch upon all the points. I may add just a few points to his as he invited uh, us to enrich his address. But he mentioned one of the names uh, in Hindu Christian dialogue, Raimundo Panikar. And I was fortunate to have Raimundo Panikar as my uh, doctoral uh, thesis mentor in Fordham University. Although he was teaching in California, but the university felt that the name was so great that they would uh, allow me to have him, even though I was doing my doctorate from Fordham University, they said, let him come. It is an honor to the university, Fordham University, the only condition they put to me was they were not able to pay his financial, uh, you know, whatever he would need. But uh, Raimondo Panikar was such a great friend for me that he never asked me for a single pay. He knew that I was from India, but he himself offered that uh, he would be my mentor. And I was extremely happy that when I published uh, part of my thesis on uh, uh, Hindu sage and saint of Maharashtra, he wrote about a 15 page, a big size book, 15 page preface for my book. I just want to now say a few remarks about Hindu Christian dialogue, but also dialogue in general. What is most urgent today for us 
is a constructive, positive, and friendly approach to relate to people of other religious traditions. Even in clashes, clashing situations, one must offer a hand of dialogue. This is my conviction. Holding back an attitude of confrontation, dialogue should not be confused with confrontation. Dialogue should not be confused with argumentation. Dialogue should not be confused with compromise, with the mentality of commercial or political negotiations, or choosing isolation. Rather, if necessary, we must agree to disagree, always searching the truth, building bridges of friendship across religious boundaries, and making every effort to persuade our partners to engage in dialogue in order to contribute to building a reconciled society and a peaceful world. You know, there is a quotation of Pope Benedict uh, the 16th. Men and women are capable of reciprocal comprehension because far from being wholly separate islands of being, men and women communicate in the same truth, no matter which religion one belongs. We all communicate in the same truth. The greater their inner contact with the one reality whom we Christians call God revealed in Jesus Christ, one reality which unites them, namely the truth. The greater their capacity to meet on common ground and therefore dialogue without this interior obedient listening to the truth would be nothing more than a discussion among the deaf. I believe that religions do not exist in vacuum. In professing religion, a believer expresses her or his deepest aspirations and develops what is most profoundly his or her own. His or her interiority, the sanctuary of his or her being upon which no one can encroach. Religious believers belonging to different religions have existed alongside one another from time immemorial, all forming one human society. So interfaith dialogue, as well as moral dialogue, even with the non-religious, those who profess uh, no religion at all, is the responsibility of every human being, I believe. People find in their respective religious tradition, animation and guidance for their life, that their religious belief gives meaning to their lives. No one can deny that religions exert a strong impact for good or for bad on every political and social community. Therefore, we who belong to religions, we who profess our uh, respective religious tradition, Hindu, Christians, Jains, Buddhists, Muslims, we, because religion exerts strong impact on society, for good or bad, we must join the, the good and uh, we must influence the political and social community that, in which we ourselves live. Believers of all religious traditions need to respect each other, cooperate with one another, and promote peace and harmony even in civil society, which is motivated by one's respective religious teachings, and thus work together for the common good of all citizens to speak for India. You know, I just want to say that it is significant uh, that these dialogues, series of dialogues, is going to take place in ECC. Uh, significant because this is the Ecumenical Christian Center. And I emphasize here, especially for us Christians of different churches, that dialogue is recommended by the churches, our own churches, because encounters with other believers become credible and effective when Christian witness is given together by all Christians. And that's why I feel these, this is very significant that this is taking place at ECC. The principal motive for 
engaging in dialogue with people of other religions is the respect for the innate free nature and of, of the human being. Innate free nature of the human being. Believing is a free act. The dignity of the human person is a transcendental value, always recognized as such by those who sincerely search for the truth. Failure to respect this dignity leads to the various and often tragic forms of discrimination, exploitation, social unrest, and national and international conflicts. So respect for human dignity finds one of its expressions in religious freedom, which if it means the right to choose one's beliefs about the meaning and purpose of life is a fundamental freedom, then arguably it is the most important human right of all. Genuine spirit of every religious tradition always advocate this freedom, which we know must always be able to find a place within the framework of country's legislation and practice. Freedom of religion is also a condition for minority religious groups who consider themselves full citizens of the state. Thus, freedom of religion encourages them to take full part in the development of the nation as our Christianity in India is doing. All the churches contribute uh, immensely for the nation building and we must continue and even increase that. Uh, because this is the way we care uh, for everyone in society, uh, especially the most downtrodden in society. This happens especially when believers of different religions come together and commit themselves to live um, in mutual respect through friendship and dialogue. Every religious tradition must translate this spirit in concrete actions while leading its adherents in the practice of its respective religious precepts. There is no freedom worthy of its name if it does not respect the freedom of the other. Now, question comes, how do we dialogue with someone who does not believe like us, think like us, act like us, or behave like us? Let us not kind of, you know, uh, get discouraged by this question because we meet people of this, this type of uh, thinking. We have ample examples how people have overcome this. And I was happy already in preparing a few thoughts. I had put this and now I hear from Swamiji uh, Dayananda, uh, uh, Dayatmananda Nanda, Nandaji that uh, he will be speaking about these two great stalwarts of dialogue in India. Uh, I have great respect, Swami Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and his disciple, Swami Vivekananda. Uh, I believe that uh, in encountering the persons of other religions, perhaps there are uh, problems to be addressed because the ideal may not be the reality but taking the partners in dialogue as who they are and as they are in a given situation and where they are, we must encounter them in all honesty and, uh, and journey together to the end. So listening in dialogue is an important part. Without listening ears, dialogue risks to degenerate into a discussion among the death, as I said. I would have continued, but I think much has been said, and I believe that Father Matthew also wants me to come uh, at least for one lecture. And so I will kind of uh, withhold my, my other reflections I have, but I am delighted to be here this evening and listening to my uh, previous uh, two speakers who have spoken, uh, our uh, Metropolitan Theodosius Marthoma, uh, and uh, Swamiji uh, Dayatmanandaji. So with this, I also want to join the chorus uh, to, to, to uh, congratulate the ECC, Father Matthew uh, Sukumar, uh, Reverend Sukumar. I want to congratulate for this initiative and uh, also making me part of it. As I told you, my, my memories go back to uh, how I have learn to love this 
uh, great center ECC. So thank you for this initiative and please continue. We need to multiply this kind of experiences of dialogue because if we don't multiply this, there are uh, some others multiplying with those fundamentalist types or whatever and discouraging us, but we will not be discouraged. Let us continue on this path of dialogue. Excellent initiative. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, Your Grace Archbishop, uh, Reverend Dr. Felix Machado. I never knew that Reverend M. A. Thomas Achen has already discovered you and uh, he wanted perhaps um, you to be sometime the director of ECC, <laughs> but you went beyond it and then uh, you were in the Vatican and then, you know, yeah. And uh, thank you very much for this uh, excellent uh, uh, exhortation to us that you know we have to be constructive in our dialogue and uh, we have to um, uh, uphold the human dignity because the human uh, that is of the uh, dignity of the human person is uh, of a transcendental value and we have to lead into concrete actions so thank you uh, your grace and uh, we are also looking forward uh, when the COVID is gone, I am sure that your grace will continue that uh, parlance from 1985 to 1993. You are closely associated. So most welcome. And uh, also we would uh, love to hear um, your lectures uh, um, in this dialogue process. So uh, thank you, uh, your grace, for this uh, uh, presentation and uh, blessing us with your presence and uh, uh, speaking about our founder Emma Thomas Achen and also ECC to multiply such centers and our activities. Thank you very much. Um, now uh, let me introduce Caroline uh, Busutil. She is a chartered accountant uh, from uh, Malta and a very dynamic uh, and creative young person. Um, she will be uh, speaking uh, as a uh, felicitating uh, us on this uh, movement. She's also a partner uh, belonging to the uh, Focolare movement. And um, Sukumar, please introduce our speaker. Thank you, Father. Let me introduce Ms. Carolyn Busutil. I'm extremely delighted and happy to introduce you, Ms. Carolyn Busutil. Ms. Carolyn was born in Malta in 1967, qualified certified public accountant from the University of Malta, works in the field of, he worked in the field, she worked in the field of finance with a private Italian firm having branches in India. Deeply passionate about the youth and also adolescents and the culture of unity, universal brotherhood promoted by the Focolare movement. She collaborates in various programs for teens and has collaborated with the Ecumenical Christian Center for various programs held with uh, interreligious dialogue. She has been carrying the great legacy of uh, the great Kara Lubick, who influenced the millions of people around the world through interfaith and interreligious dialogue. And uh, Miss Carolyn had a massive exposure in different areas. She worked in the KT in the India branch in Mumbai as a head of finance and accounts in 1996 to 2010 in Deloitte Coach Limited in Malta, 1993 to 1995, International Mystici Corporis in Florence, Italy, in 1991 to 93, New Humanity Headquarters in Rome, Italy, and also in the field of Export Trade Corporation in the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, and she also did her internship in the Bank of Valletta as a trainee. And she also uh, studied in Kansas State University in the United States. And uh, she's influencing a number of youngsters uh, in India as well as around the world. We're extremely delighted to have you, Miss Carolyn, with due respect and immense gratitude. I give this time to you. Both you, Ms. Carolyn. Good evening. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, it's a great honor and a great joy for me to offer a few words on behalf of the Focolare movement. 
to felicitate Professor Dr. Matthew and his staff at ECC for organizing this course. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my closeness to each and everyone who is participating in this course. I feel already from the this first session that it can be a journey of discovering a lot of wealth. Um, one learning one from the other. I was extremely touched by the words of uh, Theodosius Martoma and uh, uh, Swamiji and also Archbishop Machado, but I believe each one would have a story to tell and we are ready to learn from one another and discover that we really are this one family that we're talking about. I believe the choice to focus on this common aspect of Hinduism and Christianity, that of looking at the lives of sages and saints in order to grow in spirituality and union with God is a touch of genius. For all of us who have registered for this course, it promises to be truly enriching. And I'm sure it will be a journey of brothers and sisters walking together to discover new insights and a new outlook and reach new heights in our esteem for one another. ECC and Focolare have collaborated for a number of years on various programs that were organized with the aim of promoting dialogue and unity. For those who are here, who are hearing of Focolare for the first time, I think it's enough to say that its goal is a united world. And its mission is to promote a dialogue of life at all levels, in all relationships, believing that all people are brothers and sisters who find fulfillment in love and care for one another. And this is so much in line with what um, Pope Francis keeps on saying, especially in his latest encyclical letter on fraternity and social friendship, Fratelli Tutti. I, I found in chapter eight that he, he says, the different religions based on the respect for each human person as a creature called to be a child of God contribute significantly to building fraternity and defending justice in society. And then he mentions the bishops of India. He says, in the words of the bishops of India, the goal of dialogue is to establish friendship, peace, and harmony, and to share spiritual and moral values and experiences in a spirit of truth and love. Focolare started during World War II by a young Italian girl named Chiara Lubi. And in this course, we will be sharing her inspiring life story, how with her ideal of love and unity, she became a model for millions of people and brought social transformation in practically all countries of the world. There will be two lectures, and there will be Cheryl and Menezes, who will speak about Kara Lubick, a glimpse of her life, um, thought, and influence. And uh, there will be Roberto Catalano from Italy, who will speak about dialogue as a prophecy a common phenomenon, the Focolare and other movements. Uh, so we are truly thankful to ECC for bringing us together. And we pray that every session will make our resolve to be one family grow. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Caroline, uh, for your dream of uh, having one world and also the service and uh, living in fraternity fellowship uh, through dialogue. There are uh, many, more than 50 uh, people registered as uh, students of, for this course. Uh, just a few uh, seconds uh, about that course. We will be having almost 25 lectures. So uh, we will have the uh, lectures by Swamiji, by Archbishop, and also from the Focal Area Movement, and also from there are other uh, uh, scholars and uh, erudite uh, leaders who will be speaking to us. So there will be 25 uh, lectures. And uh, for today, the question will be, so you have to, those who are registered, 
they have to write uh, a 400 word just only 400 word uh, about the significance of hindu christian dialogue as you have heard from um, the uh, inaugural uh, lecture delivered by our metropolitan and also the archbishop then swamiji and caroline and uh, you can also bring in your own uh, ideas so you can send it uh, to the uh, registered uh, email you have been given and that will be a part of the process of getting the certificate and this course is a free course uh, organized by ecc in collaboration with the, the ramakrishna mission and um, uh, the cbci office of uh, interfaith dialogue and also focolare so maybe um, i think uh, before concluding and uh, before the vote of thanks we can have uh, a, a small prayer because you know we are going through such a terrible time the pandemic so therefore i request uh, maybe uh, two people uh, can uh, make a, a prayer and uh, the benediction will be given by our chairman most reverend dr metropolitan theodosius marthoma anyone would like to shirley would you like to make a prayer and then uh, pastor jagannath so two of yes, you sir. Uh, so yes, first uh, uh, shirley then pastor jagannath and uh, benediction by our metropolitan then uh, there will be uh, the vote of thanks by sukumar let's pray the lord heavenly father we thank you lord this evening for bringing us together in this platform lord to listen to to discuss, to know about the interreligious dialogue, Lord, between Christianity and Hinduism. Oh Lord, thank you for this course. Thank you for the honorable servants of God. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful way this you have framed out this. And Lord, so many people, Lord Jesus, they are interested in doing so. Oh Lord Jesus, we commit this program into your hands and we ask you to help us to know all is for the humanity, Lord, to know you, to know the God and serve him, Lord Jesus, and to live for his glory. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Lord Jesus, as the people who are registered are going to study in this dialogue, Lord. We ask for your guidance. We ask for your Lord Jesus, the guidance both for the participants and the speakers. We thank you Lord for the legends, for the learned people, for the scholars who are there in this program, Father. Lord Jesus, help us Lord to know God. Help us Lord to love God. Help us Lord to love humanity. Help us Lord. And especially, Lord, I take this precious time to pray. Lord, the world is suffering with the pandemic, Father. Oh, Lord Jesus, so many people, Lord, especially in our country. Lord Jesus, so many people are going to death, Father. Lord, we ask you to have mercy upon us. Lord, we plead for your mercy, Father. Lord, we plead for your kind. Lord Jesus, grace, Lord Jesus, so that, Lord, you look, look upon the humanity. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. People are suffering, Lord. People are dying, Father. Have mercy, Lord. Please, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to remove this, Lord Jesus, COVID-19 virus, affecting people, Lord, making people to die, Father, without knowing you, Father. Many are going away, Father. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to please have mercy upon us. And we ask you, Jesus, Father, to show your mercy. Lord. Remember, Lord, mankind with your mercy. Once again, Lord, remember us. Cause your light to shine upon your children. Lord, have mercy, Lord Jesus. And Lord, remove the people, Lord. Help the people to recover from the, this virus, Father, affected people, Father. Lord Jesus, help them. Lord. So many are struggling, Father. Lord, have mercy upon us, Father. Lord, please be with the Lord Jesus, the 
front warriors who are serving these people, Father, and strengthen them, especially I pray for my country, India, Father. We are having havoc, Father. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, look upon every child, Father, and deliver us from this corona, Father, totally so that it is eradicated, Father, and we all have wonderful mm. time again, Lord, so that mm. we can live for mm. your glory, mm. Father, thanking you, praising you, and committing all of us into mm. your wonderful, mighty hands. We ask all these Thank things you, in the precious name of our Lord yeah. and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Father, we want to thank you, Lord. We praise you, Father. We lift up your holy name, O Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have brought us together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jagannath, I think we lost. So, your grace, please, uh, the benediction. Okay. Yeah. May the blessings of the Almighty God, the creator of the universe, and creator of all of us. Lead and guide us into such a relationship where we not only glorify God, but also understand each other as brothers and sisters in a common pilgrimage designed for each one of us, now and always. Amen. Thank you. Sukumar. Thank you. Can you excuse me? I'm in a busy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank, Thank you, Your Grace. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Sukumar. Yes, ma'am. Friends, on behalf of Ecumenical Christian Center, I thank all of you for participating in this amazing inaugural webinar, Hindu Christian Dialogue for Fellowship, on the theme Sages and Saints for Self Realization and Social Transformation, a series of online lectures and discussions. I thank our chairman, the Metropolitan, the most reverend Dr. Theodosius Marthoma Metropolitan, Thirumeni of Malankara Marthoma Syrian Church for inaugural lecture. In fact, your lecture was fantastic and dynamic. Thank you for quoting number of scholars like S.K. George, Chancheya, Chakraya, Raymond Panika. Thank you for giving number of models of Prajapati, Satchidananda, Ista Devata. Thank you very much, Thirmani, for your knowledge and wisdom. It means a lot for us. Thanks to our dynamic director, Professor Father Matthew Chandran Kunil CMI. Thank you very much, Father, for designing such an amazing webinar on Hindu-Christian dialogue. In fact, Father Matthew is the mastermind to design this amazing webinar. He is a leader with a passion for humanity and creation. With his philosophy and scientific knowledge, he influenced a number of people around the world. Thank you very much, Father, for your contributions. It means a lot, Father. Thanks to the three diamond scholars who gave felicitations. I sincerely thank Swami Dayatmananda. Thank you, Swamiji. You have wealth of knowledge. You have broadened our minds. In fact, you have challenged the human-made barriers and compartmentalized attitudes. Thank you for enriching a lot that we are all one bodily, mentally, physically, aesthetically, morally, and intellectually. Thank you for telling the importance of dialogue. We are eager and curious to listen to your upcoming lectures. Thank you very much, Swami Dayatmanandaji. I also thank Archbishop Reverend Dr. Felix Machado. Thank you very much, Your Grace, for the fantastic address. We are extremely delighted. You are, you are also a friend of Ecumenical Christian Center, a frequent visitor of ECC. We are extremely delighted to know that you studied PhD mentor under the guidance of Raymond Panikkar in Fordham University. Thank you for enriching. Purpose of dialogue is to engage in searching for truth. Thank you for the wealth of knowledge, your grace, your presence, and your talk made a massive impact. Thank you very much, your grace. I also thank Ms. Caroline Busutil for your time and your contributions. It means a lot. Thank you for enriching us by uh, telling the life and thought of Carol Lubick and to have the dream of having one world. We are curious to listen lectures from a co-color movement. Thank you so much indeed. 
I also thank the deputy director who is not visible here, but uh, he made a lot of impact to conduct and to record this meeting. Thang Min Lun Wepe for the technicalities, recording and managing this webinar. In fact, I should thank one youngest member in ECC community by name Gun Hao, who gave his time to his mother, Elizabeth Min Lun Wepe, to design the posters. Thank you so much, sister, for designing these posters and upcoming lectures, it means a lot. Thanks to all the participants for your precious time. We look to forward to seeing you to have a dialogue. Special word of thanks to Shirley Ma'am and Jagannath for your prayers. Thank you so much indeed. Kindly remember our ECC in your prayers. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Sugumar. And thanks all of you. Uh, many of you are known to us. Our treasurer is there and uh, uh, Professor Raja is there. And um, yes, we have uh, seen Delia and uh, Prasadachan and 